This week on El Caraham Radio, we begin the GMRS repeater build. We've got to select radios, we've got to get a bunch of parts together, and in part one, we're going to show you bringing many of those parts together and beginning the planning and logistics phase of the project. This week on El Caraham Radio. Well, welcome back to El Caraham Radio, and this week we're going to begin a new series, the Abandoned Repeater Site GMRS Repeater Build. And uh, building a repeater can be so much fun, and there's so many different things that come together for a repeater. As my Elmer told me early on in this project, it's not just slapping two radios together. So what we need to do is do some planning logistics and gathering of the components and parts and you need to have some flexibility in here because you may want to change your mind or you may want to add some things as you get into the project itself so on our next page here we're going to talk a little bit about some of the planning what's the need here if you're building a repeater who's going to use it we already have a GMRS repeater at our main location where we call our 88 site and that's our primary repeater shack but we have this nice new shack in Monticello which is just a little bit further south and there's a lot of camping down in that area and folks would probably like to use a GMRS repeater from time to time. Where are the parts going to come from? Do we have them on hand or are we going to have to purchase some of these parts? What tools will be necessary? Are we going to do a rack installation? or a cabinet installation? How will the repeater be powered? And what are the various parts that we're going to need? On the logistics side, we really need to start, start thinking about the different parts that need to come together. Radios, cabinet controller, duplexer, power monitoring panel, power supply itself, whether it's gonna be battery or mains or both, wiring for everything, programming software for the radios themselves. We're going to be talking more about those radios coming up and how to program those towards the end of the video here in part one. Various cables for power, connectivity, communications, and again, the various hardware screws, nuts, nylon ties, project boxes, panels, and so forth. There's a lot that comes together in a build. The next piece in our planning is to think about, well, are we really providing a service? Is, is there a repeater already up in the area that could do this? And the answer to that is, sort of. There are some GMRS repeaters in our area. In fact, we're kind of GMRS repeater rich in our Lake Cumberland region, but there's not one on the south end of the lake. So we thought, yeah, this would be a good idea. We went to mygmrs.com. We did a lookup to see who's registered their GMRS repeaters, and we found several, but not where we were thinking about putting one. So I went ahead and set up a brand new account, and uh, we went ahead and registered the repeater so that we'd already have that frequency and tone set aside. And that way, if anybody else comes along and wants to set up a GMRS repeater, they'll see we have one there. They can still set up another one, just on a different frequency potentially and here we're looking at on the map uh, uh, effectively what it may reach this is a hilly mountainous area so that circle isn't necessarily indicative of the actual reach now the next piece in our planning and logistics is do we have instructions on how to do all of this if you're just depending on one person with the knowledge in their brain that's great but if you're not learning from that Elmer you need to have some instructions and even my Elmer AC4DM our club's Elmer has instructions on how to build one of these repeaters um, this is from a, a different uh, ham radio operator that ultimately put these guides together and he's downloaded and created individual pages and highlighted areas that he thought would be important as we go through the programming process on the radios and so having a, a, a build book like this or as we like to say in IT a cookbook a recipe if you will is really really handy because then you can just do this over and over and over again in fact we have plans for building at least two more of these repeater builds for various projects coming up so this book is going to be extremely valuable and it's something that you can pass down within the club itself now we need to start thinking about the radios themselves and so 
uh, AC40M, uh, again, the Elmer Helping Spearhead this project, has a bunch of radios just laying around, and we thought, why not use some of those radios that he has that he's purchased very inexpensively over the years? These radios were about $300 brand new with a mic and the equipment and so forth, but you can get these off of eBay coming off of business band usage and so forth, and we're going to utilize the UHF ic f 221. Now you can get this in a 128 channel model or an 8 channel model. We're going to go with the 8 channel model for this particular project and we'll need two of these. Uh, he happened to have several but again we're going to need more of these as time goes by as well for various projects and you can also get these in two meters. We're going to need a rack or a cabinet. We decided since he also had some of these Motorola cabinets in stock uh, just laying around, why not use one of these cabinets? It's going to require a little bit of fabrication to get everything to fit, but it will be nice and neat. Now in this particular picture we're looking at a controller. This is from MCC, Microcomputer Control Concepts. And we're going to use this particular controller. It's probably, well it's not probably, it is overkill for what we need, but it's definitely going to allow us to do a, a repeater ID. We're going to need a power panel where all of our power comes in, a distribution box, fuses, and so forth, and a power meter so that we can make sure that we're getting 12 volts to the radios. Uh, having plenty of distribution where you can have auxiliary power for various um, um, radios uh, and other accessories that we might install, uh, not only in this project, but down the road, would be really handy. And this particular power panel that uh, he had created will be perfect, and we're just going to repurpose it. We need power, and uh, IOTA makes some really good power supplies and battery chargers, and that's in fact what we're going to use inside of the cabinet is an I uh, IOTA DLS-15. Uh, so this was also just laying around, but you can purchase these, and uh, here we have a distribution box, another one that we're going to put on the shelf with the IOTA in this particular case, and that gives us additional places of connecting things like the radios. We're going to need some wire and you're going to need power leads and we're also going to need some custom nine pin cables for going into what we call a termination panel which makes connecting the radios and the controller much much easier which will come up in another video but various wire connectors and so forth you're going to need for this project here we're looking at a shelf now originally our uh, idea for this shelf was to put the radios on it and we need to drill some holes we're also going to have to shorten it a little bit so it'll fit inside the cabinet it's a little too deep and so we begin the process of fabrication uh, which is drilling some holes for the actual radios the uh, mounting brackets for the radios now as you'll see in some videos coming up a, a little bit later we actually called an audible and even though we originally installed the radios on this shelf we decided to repurpose this shelf for the power supply so uh, sometimes you, you when you get into these projects you are going to have to make some changes uh, or you decide to make some changes because it's just logistically going to be a better way to go but here we're actually drilling those holes for the radios and then we're going to mount those radios initially so <laughs> well, I'm still showing you the work even though eventually we decided to go away from this and again it's to show you how a project can evolve as you think about it some more and you think about what might be in your best interest here we're marking this shelf so that we can cut it and sure enough because we only had about ten and a half inches depth inside the cabinet this particular shelf is just too deep and wouldn't allow things to go behind so we're going to shorten it by about three and a half inches as I, as I remember it and again pull out your uh, your saw here and shorten it up a bit so that we can make it useful for the uh, well originally for the radios but ultimately it's going to be for the power supply as we'll see so we're just finishing up the cut here <laughs> and uh, this is what I love about these projects is some of the fabrication that goes into this uh, here I've got an actual file in my hand I do actually use tools from time to time and uh, and then we're painting it up so that uh, not only won't it, it rust but it'll just look a little bit nicer as well we don't have just bare metal just glinting uh, as uh, or exposed just painting it up a little bit there which just doesn't take very long for it to uh, to dry so next we're going to begin the process of the radios and we needed to open these radios up a little bit because we needed to find out whether or not a particular modification had actually been performed on these radios 
as the instructions detail, you need to actually solder a pad inside. It's actually labeled F. You need to solder that pad so that the connector coming out, the data connector and the cable coming out, will allow the radios to work in concert. So we've checked both of these radios to make sure that F pad has been soldered already, and it has. So next we're going to go into attaching a cable. This is called an OPC-617, and uh, this particular cable you can actually purchase. They're not very cheap. You could probably build one, but you can purchase these as well. And we've installed one in each radio so that we can connect them ultimately to the controller and to each other. In addition, we started installing the brackets for the radios because, again, originally we thought we were going to use that shelf we had just cut up for uh, having the radios inside the cabinet. And so we've got our brackets being installed, and here we're installing the brackets individually actually on the shelf, and then we'll install the radios uh, next. So uh, you couldn't get to these, uh, these screws and put the nuts on with the radios uh, on the brackets, so we're actually uh, installing the brackets separately, and then we'll install the radios on top of that. <laughs> a little bit fiddly, but uh, again, uh, originally our thoughts were, hey, this will be a nice shelf for putting those radios on. And here we've got a nice shot of the radios. Now you can see the pigtails already installed and the radios. Each of these radios had their original power connectors. If you're buying these off eBay, you can get them pretty inexpensively, but a lot of times the leads are cut on them. So you may have to put some Anderson power poles on the ends, uh, which we have detailed in other videos. We're also labeling the radios here. Uh, again, they're still on the shelf, but uh, we wanted to make sure that we had an idea of which one we're going to use for receive and which one we're going to use for transmit. And again, these are ICF221, so they're UHF. And that way we'll be able to go up a little bit higher in the band for GMRS. Nice little uh, sexy shot here of the radios installed on the shelf. Looking good, actually. Looking really good, actually. Now we needed to test the radios a little bit just to make sure they're going to work. Um, <laughs> and so we hooked up power and uh, we hooked up power to one of the radios and we also wanted to hook it up to the computer to make sure that we'll be able to program it. That's the actual cable that we're going to use that pl will plug into the front where your mic goes. We're using a piece of software from ICON called the CS-F100 program to program the radios. One for receive, utilizing the, the book of information, one for receive, and one for transmit. And we wanted to make sure that the radios would, in fact, work in this regard, that they weren't broken, that there wasn't anything wrong with them. So we're just hooking them up to the computer and making sure that they are programmable. So to kind of finish out part number one, we have identified parts, we've done some planning, we've looked at some of the logistics of whether or not this repeater is going to be useful in its area. Coming up in part two, we're going to start with the termination panel, and uh, those pigtails coming out of the radios are going to come into this panel that allows us to do jumpers, connect to a controller, and so forth. So stay tuned for part two in building a GMRS repeater here on El Cara Ham Radio.